Victoria Peace Africa is bad. It's simply not good. And today I want to show you why and how. I'm going to start with some nitpicks like, for example, the capital of Sokoto being Gizawa, not Sokoto for some reason. But it's going to be really, really bad to the point where I'm just wondering how did that even happen? But yeah, a flag is a very important thing that represents your nation on a world stage and also does that in Victoria Free. A flag is often the thing you see and associate with a nation even before you associate the name. Like, you often just see the flag or you first see the flag and then remember the name. And that makes it even more sad that a lot of flags in Victoria Free for West Africa are either really inaccurate or really bad. For example, most West African nations use a generic yellow flag and for some it makes sense. It's like, it's quite hard finding flags for some West African nations because flags are still a very European concept. But for some it's really weird that they didn't just use the historical flag. If you google Messina and then click on images, one of the first things you will find is the flag, which is really like a weird mistake to make. Like if someone had to add that flag that is currently being used in, I don't know, I'm not going to assume they didn't Google it, but it's a really weird decision nonetheless. Then it becomes a bit weird because they did it right for EU4. The flag for the Congo in Victoria 3 doesn't make any sense. They could have just used the same one that they use in EU4. I don't know why. Or, what's like weirdly annoying me, they just use like modern ones, but in the wrong time frame. Like, they use the Zulu Kingdom used by the British from 1884 to 1897. But again, EU4 does it right. Like, there already is a good flag. You could just like copy and paste, but it might not even be an African problem because they did the same thing for Prussia. Okay, what also annoys me a bit is that most of the African nations have like kind of modern borders. Like Sokoto has a Nigerian border, and the Homi has the same borders as modern day Benin, Ashanti has the same borders as Ghana, and Liberia is just hasn't changed at all. <laughs> And it's not that big of a deal, it's okay, but it's a shame that it uses modern borders and it, that it's ahistorical because it would have beautifully shown that modern African borders are European invention and literal map painting and not something that came naturally. I also have a slight problem with Egypt being in Kadaviat at the start of the game, or Kedavet, I don't know how to pronounce it honestly. Because if you look, just look at the Wikipedia article, it literally says the Kedavid was proclaimed in 1867 and not in 1836. But, applause to Paradox, they actually read a lot of the article and remembered that, well, Egypt was basically autonomous back then. So, they were right, I have to applaud them for that. But they still forgot to give them Somalia, so hey! Editor's note, I also forgot to say that Oyo should be a constitution monarchy, not an absolute principality, but anyways. And now we get into the really obviously bad part. To the point where I think some of you, even without any knowledge on Africa, might have been a bit weirded out. For example, they did my boy, Kanem Bonu, wrong because, well, they deleted Kanem from the, you know, the nation called Kanembonu and gave it to Wadai, the nation that did not own any part of Lake Chad. And this is even one of the larger maps I could find with Wadai, on, with Wadai in it. They were probably even smaller than that, but yet they still gave Kanem from the Kanembonu Empire to Wadai. I think they did it to have, like, Chad to just be two smooth states without, like, cutting it apart, uh, without, like, having two little small pieces, but it's still, like, man, that oh, a third state might have actually been enough to, like, cover this. And then we get to, like, the part where you have to Google the name and you, of the nation and you find that out immediately. The Orange Free State 
and the Transvaal Republic did not exist until 1852. They just added these two nations in, which didn't exist for another 20 years. But I don't know why, but I guess it's because... Well, it's probably because they read the first part of the Wikipedia article that said there were already Boer Republics before these two. But that was South Pansberg, though. A small nation north of Transvaal. Which also might have not even truly existed until the 1840s. So, okay. That is really weird. Another thing about South Africa. They completely forgot Shosa. The Shosa had a war at that time against the British. They didn't look at it or something. I don't know. But... Shosa was pretty independent as far as I know. They were not really answering British rule and the Brits considered Shosa to be part of the British Empire but it was de facto not the case. Technically you could make the argument if that Shosa didn't exist at the time then Egypt should also be a substate of the Ottomans because while they de facto weren't they practically were. But okay. All of that I can kind of excuse. Sloppy borders, what gives, weird flags, yeah they're hard to find. Some nations having modern borders, okay, it, there are limitations to the game engine. But then it comes. Oh my Demogaram, what have they done? Demogaram was the reason I made this video. Because, well, it's the most oblivious part on Paradox. It's the part that showed Paradox does not care about Africa. They literally do not. They may add more states in Victoria 2, but at least Victoria 2 showed that it does not care about Africa. Victoria 3 makes it seem like they care a lot about Africa. They added a lot more new states. But if you just Google some of them, you will find that, well, it's a demogaram. Demogaram was not a state that existed. From all the maps I showed you today, none of them had Demogaram in it. And it's not because I looked specifically for maps proving my point. They simply are none because Demogaram did not exist as an independent state at any time of history. Demogaram, also known as the Sultanate of Sandir, was part of the Bonu Empire. This, let me repeat, the nation in Victoria Free that spans a length of 900 kilometers, the length from London to Berlin, did not exist in real life. And here comes the weird part. They were still historically in the border that Bonu owns Demagaram. So the giant nation of Demagaram in Victoria Free does not even own the historica Demogaram, the town that only got large after French colonization. It literally was hard for me to find any maps with Demogaram on it. And the best map I could find is this one, which shows that Demogaram is a tiny, tiny sultanate north of Sokoto. That is the best map I could find of Demogaram. I do not know how this happened. It is weird. I don't know how you could simply add something that didn't exist. Someone had to go through the effort of coding that nation in that didn't exist in real life. It would have literally been easier to make the entire part of Demogaram wasteland. And they went for the hard ahistorical option. And this is what showed me they did not care. They didn't, they probably didn't even Google the simplest form of research they could have done, and they didn't. And I am baffled and a bit insulted by this. Honestly, well, all of the things I've listed in this video were things that were done wrong, they have, could have literally been as easy to make right. I still want Victoria Free to succeed, but this is just saddening. 
Oh my Demogarum, Paradox, what have you done? Okay, this is the end of the video. I'm open for feedback and I most definitely was wrong in some parts of the video. Um, and I think I may write a lot of corrections in the description, especially those that came up in the comments. I'm completely open. I hope you had fun watching this video and me break my head at what the hell Paradox was doing.